of the New Leaf Podcast. This is my podcast about knitting and crocheting and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and you can find all of my patterns on my blog newleafdesigns.nl um, and I will list all of the other things somewhere on the screen. <laughs> um, I have a couple of things to mention before we get into what I've been making recently. Um, first of all, um, thank you so much for everyone who has purchased some yarn in my uh, last Etsy shop update. It was my very, very first yarn update. I have um, been experimenting with some natural dyeing, which was amazing, and um, it was really really fun how all of you also seem to like the yarns and yes i just want to thank you for your enthusiasm i've been on holiday and there were still some uh, yarns in stock before i left so i opened the shop again and there are some well just four or five yarns still in stock so well at the moment of recording so and i do hope to make this a kind of regular thing, um, but we'll, we'll see about that. I haven't done any dyeing in the last couple of weeks because I've been on holiday, which was really nice, and I'll talk about that some more um, further along in the episode. Another thing I want to mention at the top is that you probably have seen an advertisement before the start of this video, um, I applied for YouTube ad advertisements in December of last year. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed people like complaining about it, but it took a r really, really long time for YouTube to review all of the applications and to accept them. And it seems that my channel has been accepted and um, I just want to say because I also find advertisements to be really annoying and um, so I'm just gonna wait and see what these advertisements do to my channel because I don't want to sacrifice too much if I get too little from it because uh, I only I think I only get paid when someone actually clicks on the advertisement and you know who does that? <laughs> I never click on those advertisements. So um, what I might do, well, I am actually quite sure I will open a Patreon page for my um, podcast, for my designs, for my blog. Um, so people who want to contribute can actually choose to contribute and, um, you know, not everyone has to watch this advertisement yeah we'll, we'll just see about that i won't tell you about it too much because it's just an idea in my head at the moment but uh, i just wanted to mention that so this might be the first time you're seeing an advertisement on my video i just wanted to um explain a little bit uh another thing is that i sprained my wrist last week um my bag for the holidays wasn't that heavy, but um, I lifted it the wrong way and I kind of sprained my wrist and um, I haven't really been able to crochet or knit anymore after that, so um, yeah, that's uh, a pity, but I, I've been reading a lot of books. <laughs> 
and um, during my holiday I really didn't have that much time for knitting and crocheting anyway so um, yeah but right now like when I'm watching other people's podcasts I cannot just watch podcasts I have to do something at the same time whether it's weaving in ends or crocheting or knitting or embroidering or whatever um, and now I can't do that and I'm like oh, can't sit still so uh, I hope that with this bandage, uh, which you know keeps it really tight, and I try not to wear it the whole day through because you know that makes your muscles kind of lazy and rely on the bandage, and that's not good. And uh, I try not to knit and crochet, but that's really hard, <laughs> as you can imagine. Anyway, but it's nothing to freak out about. Um, I've had this multiple times. It's because I had an arm surgery 10 years ago, so don't even worry about that. But um, yeah, I am more sensitive to um, crochet and knit injuries, I think. So yeah, that's why. Anyway. Let's get on with the podcast. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have. I should have mentioned this before I did all of the rambling administrative stuff. But I always have timestamps in the description box. So if there's a section that you're not really interested in, or you just you know you want to get to the fun stuff or whatever, I always have timestamps in the description box, which is just below the video. Uh, you have to really uh, click on it to open usually, and it will list the time for when uh, usual when most sections start and you, you can just click on the time and it will take you there so let's start with my finished object which was actually finished in may <laughs> but um i've only been vlogging about it uh in june because it was a huge project and i didn't want to uh, write one blog post about starting it and then writing another blog post two months later. So uh, usually when I have a free pattern, I want to keep the blog post kind of condensed, kind of in the same month so that people, you know, don't forget about the pattern. And um, that pattern was the Chev Rainbow Blanket. This is the Shiv Rainbow Blanket, and I love it, I love it so much. Um, I have to say, I've never been like a rainbow type of girl, but um, what I usually dislike about rainbows is if they only use the primary colors or they, they just look like children's nursery rooms. And, um, but with this, it's like this color gradient effect and kind of broken up in places, but oh, I love it so much. And um, uh, the yarn I used for this um, is kind of this painter, painter's palette box, kind of. Um, this is the worsted or Aran. Uh, version of the yarn I use. I used a DK version, but it's the same brand. It's Escape Kiss, and it's called Stone Washed and River Washed. They're mixed in here. See, this is a river, oh, the glare from the window. This is a river wash, but then this is a stone wash, and so it's just mixed in here. And um, uh, so I used, I used not the Stone Washed XL package but the stone washed and refer washed regular package which has 50 colors so 50 little balls and uh, they are 15 grams each I believe um, it's been a while since I made it now but um, I also used uh, 10 50 gram balls so 10 full-sized uh, balls of this yarn uh, as a kind of background color so you see that, um, you know, this is all in crocheted in rows and with fringes on the ends, so you don't need to weave in it any ends. Um, and see here, the army green, kind of the olive green colorway, is the background color. And I've used 
um, the smaller balls from the rainbow pack I've used in between. And then here, um, so I keep, I have the exact order of the, all of the colors that I used in the blog post, which is up on my blog. It's called Shift Rainbow Blanket, free pattern. Um, so I have all of the color um, order, like <laughs> how do you use them? I have that all in there, uh, but you can see here the background, background color is the olive one, as I mentioned, and then here it's the lime green one. And here it's kind of a, um, kind of a foresty green but not really here's a foresty green <laughs> um and then onto blue um yeah and because it's kind of a double gradient because the background colors are forming a gradient and then the smaller stripes the rainbow stripes are also forming a gradient it's kind of you know it's it's a wonderful effect and i really really love it um, and you start each row from the same side, so the front is only uh, right side, so um, so you have a real front and back of the work. And personally, I really like this because I really dislike the back side of double crochet stitches. I just don't like the bumps. Um, so to me, it's really satisfying to be working in rows, but still just only have the right side facing you. Um, I suppose it's kind of a tick, of, a tick I have, but um, yes, so I really like it. It took me about two months to make this. Um, my mom is making another version at the moment. She is using only white as the background color, but still using the same rainbow pack that I used. Um, and these rainbow packs, the Escape You Stone Washed, River Washed color packs are available from most Escape Use retailers, uh, both offline and off and both offline and online. So um, like Wool Warehouse, Naughty House if you're in the uh, if you're in Canada. Um, I suspect Deramores has them too. Um, Black Sheep Wools. Um, also some Dutch retailers such as Caro's Atelier. Um, yeah, just just lots of them. Also, um, be inspired uh, in South Africa. They also have these packs. So, yeah, you're bound to get them somewhere local to you. Um, and I've really, really loved making this blanket. It's a really nice kind of TV project. Um, it's almost just double crochets, and um, yeah. Everything's written right out for you in the free crochet pattern on my blog. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I have already been asked what the dimensions are of, the, of this blanket and I haven't measured it yet, so I, I'll be sure to add that soon. And I also filmed a tutorial video on how to do the fringes um, in a way that you can uh, also incorporate the ends of the blanket. And I still have to edit that video, so bear with me. But, um, you know, the pattern has only been up for a week and it took me two months to finish it. So I think I have a little bit more time before uh, someone actually gets to the fringe part. Um, I used a four millimeter crochet hook. Yeah, and it's just nice. It has so many colors that it actually goes with everything which uh, seems kind of contradicting, but uh, I had never thought that such a colorful blanket would go with uh, my living room. I have really dark, um, yeah, a really dark living room. I have a dark green couch, uh, some petrol and mustard pillows, a large plant, it's all dark green and, you know, dark red brick walls, uh, dark wooden floors, so, 
I never expected this blanket to go with uh, my interior, but it totally does. So yeah, it's amazing. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with this blanket and I hope those of you who make it will enjoy it too. Next project is the Breeze Lux shawl I've been working on. Uh, Breeze Lux is one of my own designs. It's a crochet shawl. And I've been making one in a colorway I haven't tried before. So this is Escape You Swirl. It's a gradient yarn cake. And I love working with this yarn. And <laughs> it seems as, as if I haven't done a lot. Um, but this is already hard. <laughs> um, so I started just before my holiday and I worked on it in the plane. I think I did about this much in the plane ride there. Uh, it took about, we were, I think, 16 hours uh, on the road for 16 hours. And then on the rest of the holiday, I did this much. Um, but, you know, we were just having so much fun and, um, you know, we were going diving and being super exhausted from that. I didn't really want to crochet anymore. So um, I'm kind of pleased with what I have done so far. And there is a cowl at the moment for, for this project, which is running until August the 1st. Um, I might extend it, but, you know, I don't know if anybody needs more time. So please do let me know. Um, and I hope to get mine finished in time as well because I still have a long way to go, like more than, more than half. Um, and now I have to be really careful about, you know, not crocheting too much. So I hope I will get it done in time, but I won't be, um, forcing myself. Um, and there is this cute little stitch marker that just arrived yesterday and I just put it on the project. This is huge, uh, I don't know if it's a llama or an alpaca, I think an alpaca. Uh, alpaca progress keeper or stitch marker from Star Fiber Studio, uh, which is a Dutch indie dyer, but she also does a lot of stitch markers. Her name is Esther and, um, oh, I just thought this was so cute and, uh, my boyfriend, uh, let me pick out some cute stitch markers for my birthday, which was a couple of days ago and this one already arrived, so yay! And I also, um, on our business card, there was another cute stitch marker with a star. I'm guessing because it's Star Fiber Studio, and it's really nice. I really like these uh, light bulb shaped um, stitch markers because I use them a lot, um, especially with lace patterns or Stephen West patterns. I need a lot of those, <laughs> and. Um, Really enjoying this project. Wish I could work on it more. And um, yeah. There are already some people who have finished their breeze blocks, which is amazing because, um, yeah, I always think of it as, you know, it's it's a kilometer of yarn. So it's, it's a lot of yarn that you need to crochet in a small amount of time. Um, and, um, and they've all turned out so beautifully and um, can't wait to see more. Um, I haven't collected any prizes yet, but I hope to be able to give away a whirl, a scapey squirrel, because scapey squirrel is the most amazing yarn ever. Um, and I thoroughly enjoy working with it. Um, yeah, but I haven't um, actually collected any of them yet. So, um, I also brought a knitting project with me on my holiday, which is in my Bali bag, which I bought in Bali and that, that's why. And, um, I've worked on it quite a bit. And I want to show you the yarn first. <laughs> um, so I'm alternating skeins like a good little knitter. 
And this is Chestnut Cabin on her Yak Singles Base. Um, I have the tag right here. It's a 80% wool, but that consists of 65% merino superwash and 15% yak. And the other 20% is silk. And it's uh, quite a generous skein. It's 120 grams per skein and 480 meters. I don't know how much yards though that's that is maybe 500 yards. I don't know. I don't know, but it's a lot and um, it's quite thin. So I thought <clears throat> I thought to use it for a garment. So I cast on for a tenya by Caitlin Hunter. I have been, you know, I I bought this with a different project in mind, but then I didn't have enough and it was not the correct weight. Uh, so I thought, oh well, I've been wanting to knit the Tanya uh, top for a very long time now. And I finally started. Um, I haven't blocked it yet. I actually wanted to block it before I separate for the sleeves because I want to see how this lace portion looks and if it flares out too much. Or... But I really love how this is looking and I love the color. So I, I had to use all of the light bulb stitch markers that I owned because I there's about 20 19 or 20 repeats in the size I'm knitting and um, <laughs> I had to use all of the stitch markers um, and I don't know if you can see I altered the lace section just a little bit usually there is this pearl uh, line right here at the top of the pattern and also in between and I just omitted those because I didn't really like how it looked and there's also some pearl stitches for like right in between in the pattern and I think if I want if I would knit this top again that I would also just take out those except for the ones between the um, between the uh, how do you call this the twisted stitches here because I do think that looks nice but um, there is also some here like on top of some decreases and it just doesn't look very neat to me but maybe it will look better after blocking um, yeah Ooh, don't want to lose any stitches on here um, yeah, so I haven't worked on this for a week now and I really want to work on this, but I'm um, gonna really have to take it slow and yeah, I'm knitting the size medium or large um, because I had a much smaller gauge. Um, so the size I am getting will actually be just a bit bigger than the small size and I hope it won't be too big and I hope I will have enough yardage. So the large size in the pattern calls for 930 meters of yardage and I have 960 meters so I have a little bit uh, more but since um, my gauge is so small I'm gonna have to knit more rows to reach you know the correct length so I actually think I will have two less yarn <laughs> that I won't have enough yarn so I don't know if if that's something I can correct with was just cropping it a little bit more than I wanted or maybe shorter sleeves. Um, I, I have already decreased just four stitches, 
like twice on uh, each side. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna block it and see where it's at and um, yeah, maybe I'll crop it some more because yeah, I don't really want to run out of yarn, uh, especially because I bought this yarn a long time ago and the and Chestnut Cabin still dyes this colorway. Oh, the colorway, I haven't told you yet. It's, um, where's this tag now? Um, it's called Cinnamon Fudge Brownie, I think. So she still dyes this colorway, but I think it will be hugely different from, you know, the ones I bought two years ago. Um, yeah, but I'm really loving the color and, and then again, it's also, it's just a breeze on the chow goose I'm using. I only have fixed um, circulars from chow goose. Um, yeah, they're just really smooth and sharp tips and yeah. Um, I'm using my ice cream stitch marker. I made this myself uh, from an old pair of earrings that I had. Uh, I wouldn't wear these earrings anymore but I thought oh well I can make them into progress keepers or stitch markers. So I did. That was the main project I um, worked on during my holiday. I have also uh, started a new pair of socks since the last episode. Yeah, but I've only been working on this for I think a few days. They are a new pair of socks for my mom uh, as I've never knit a pair of socks for my mom yet and um, the yarn is by Drops drops. Uh, it's called Fable. Um, and I like it that it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of lavender. Um, so I really like it. But, you know, I wish I didn't like drops yarn because I don't agree with their, um, with that company. But yeah. So the needle holder is a Alice in Wonderland theme, and I got that with um, a Alice in Wonderland uh, mystery package um, from Het Wool Based, which is a Dutch indie dyer. And I'm also keeping a pair of scissors in here. I thought that was really handy. Um, so <laughs> I haven't took this out a long while. I see they've got some creases here and there. So I'm just knitting these toe up. I'm using West Yorkshire spinners in the Penny Royal colorway for the toe. And I'm knitting all the way to the cuff. And then I will do an afterthought heel with the same color. And I might also use it for the cuff as I have a lot of this purple still left um, and I don't have a lot of this I only have 150 gram ball so I'm planning to knit until I have 25 grams left and then just you know starting the second sock yeah I actually yeah I actually really like it I'll have to find this colorway by some other dyer I have never knit socks for my mom so I hope she will like them. I've knit socks for lots of people in my family, but I haven't knit any for my mom because she can knit them herself, but she doesn't really like to knit socks. So I thought, oh well, I'll, I'll knit you a pair. And the last project I have been working on is something really special, although the project itself could not be any more simple. <laughs> it's, um, it's a blanket really really small blanket and I have just started a row and then I don't know I think I was watching a movie and the movie got interesting uh, so I started at the triangle at the at the point and right now I'm increasing every right side row 
and I'm gonna knit until I get to the halfway point of this ball. This was a 100 gram ball, I think. Yeah, so I'm gonna knit until I have 50 grams left. And this lovely yarn is Escapius Eliza or Eliza, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, and it's super soft. Um, but since, you know, and usually when I have super soft yarns, I automatically think baby stuff. Like, oh, um, like, Someone is also always expecting a baby here and there. So <laughs> I I could do with some baby yarn, but then because it's 100% polyester, I don't want to be using this for a baby uh, because, you know, it can melt and, you know, nasty situations. So, um, so who am I making this blanket for? Well, the stitch marker I'm using is a little hint. <laughs> We're gonna be picking up our first kitten next week. Um, she will be named Momo and she's a Russian blue. Um, we, we kind of just stumbled upon Russian blue because um, um, I, I don't know if I want to get into this but um, we have like a medium-sized house, like maybe, okay, small house. Um, and we actually, we wanted a cat for a really long time. Um, but we've always lived in an apartment and, you know, it's, it was way, way too small. And now we have this house and uh, we thought, okay, we can look into, you know, getting a cat. Um, but as we... You know, we didn't want an overly energetic cat because we just wanted to keep her, him or her indoors and not, you know, we, we still want to enjoy the birds outside of the, um, you know, in the garden. So we wanted to have an indoor cat. And we just did this test online, like see you what kind of cat um, fits you. Um, and we did several separate tests and <clears throat> number one on all of them was Russian blue so we thought okay uh, maybe let's get into that and it turns out they um, um, they didn't shed as much fur so it's um, they're easier to be around for people who are allergic and my my dad and my brother are both allergic to any animal with hair or feathers so um, I hope it will be you know <laughs> better for them um, and also you know Russian blues are uh, bred to be indoors and you know I just I just wanted a cat that um, was going to be happiest with us. And most important uh, is that the Russian blues don't have any um, diseases in, you know, in that cat species. So, um, like they, <laughs> I'm not sure how to call it, like they don't have any well-known diseases for that kind of cat species. So, so we have a larger chance of a happy and healthier cat. So yeah, so that's why we chose Russian Blue and um, we were looking at catteries and finally found one in the Netherlands and they still had, um, or they had a nest planned and were, you know, taking reservations. It was like, okay, we're gonna reserve a cat. <clears throat> and. Um, like order a cat um yeah and we went to see her um two months no one month ago yeah and we're picking her up next week she's gonna be three months old then um and i'm super excited and uh, i just wanted to make something for her and i'm gonna knit this blanket put in her basket you know i'm not sure if she wants to sit in her basket but whatever and and i really think momo is going to be the most spoiled cat ever yeah but super excited and um i hope to get it finished but 
you know, there's so many things I have to, I want to work on, not have to, I want to work on, and only so much I can do. So we'll see about that, but um, yeah, just a heads up. In the next podcast, I might have a little co-host to share with you guys. Yeah, so that was basically all the um, crochet knitting I wanted to share with you. I am going to share a little bit about our holiday now, so if you're not interested in that, I completely understand. Um, we went to uh, Taiwan for two weeks and then one week in Vietnam, and it was amazing. Uh, we did have a little bit of bad weather in uh, Taiwan, it was very rainy, very humid, very hot. <laughs> So it felt like I was sitting in a sauna with like plastic raincoat. It was just so hot and humid, but um, we had the best time and uh, I shared a lot of it on my Instagram stories. Um, and there basically was a lot of food and I made this little highlight in my Instagram profile. If you're interested in the food, I, I, um, I kind of collected all of them there. Um, we had a lot of uh, sushi and great seafood because, you know, Taiwan is like just a big island and there's a coast, you know, all around and you have lots of seafood everywhere. Um, we went diving. I love diving. Um, and yeah, that was amazing. We saw a lot of beautiful fish species. We saw sea snakes. Uh, which was the main um, the main purpose of the travel for um, my boyfriend, who's uh, really into snakes. Um, uh, we saw sea turtles, which was, you know, it's always awesome. And we just had a lot of great food. Uh, so we spent two weeks in Taiwan, and then we visited Vietnam for one week. Uh, we went to Hanoi where a friend of mine is living at the moment, although she's coming back to Germany next week. Um, she has been my co-worker for two years and then she decided to travel around the world for half a year and uh, um, left with her parents in uh, Vietnam just uh, a couple of months. And uh, we visited her there. She is Vietnamese herself, so she showed us around Hanoi, which was amazing. I always, you know, I. I love traveling with a local, even more if it's my friend. So she showed us all the best places for food and, you know, we didn't have to worry about not understanding anyone there because I didn't understand anyone there. I always make an effort to kind of learn um, a couple of words in the language. Um, so I learn a couple of words in Vietnamese, but so I can pronounce them and people can understand me but I most most of the time I cannot understand their answer so that was um, yeah I was really really happy that she was with us and we went to, to an island in uh, Vietnam as well called Cat Ba and it was amazing it was like like Ha Long Bay but you know like Ha Long Bay used to be because Ha Long Bay right now is just infested with Chinese people and just uh, very polluted and touristy and the place we went to was also very touristy but still like super nice. Um, I did not buy any yarn on my holiday. I saw two yarn shops, one in Taiwan and one in uh, Vietnam but both of them were like everything was wrapped in plastic, acrylic. Uh, the one in Vietnam looks a little bit nicer but yeah. I know, I, I could have bought something just as a souvenir, but uh, yeah, it just looked so acrylic and I thought, nah, I'm not going to be, you know, happy to work with that. And um, yeah, I, I did buy some, um, I bought some earrings at an aquarium we went to in uh, South Taiwan. Ah, oh, it's not focusing, but... Um, so it's a really rainy day and we went to an aquarium because it was indoors and they had this these earrings with glass, you know, tiny glass crabs on them and uh, I thought they would make really cute stitch markers so, so I bought a pair of those. 
Got some stationery because I cannot resist stationery. Um, I have this tiny little notebook with a Vietnamese recipe on it. It's super cute. Just look at it. I love these things. And of course, Relakuma. Cannot resist anything Relakuma. Um, so it's basically a booklet uh, with all kinds of post-its and stickers and I always use these as thank you notes for orders or you know to friends or yeah I really like these that was the only things I got actually I did see this one other craft store in, um, in Taiwan and I thought it would be really fun to share and that was actually the only clip that I filmed in the whole holiday uh, on my camera. Um, underground craft store because everything in Taipei is underground because, you know, above ground is super hot. Um, and it was this craft store um, with all kinds of paper craft items, um, scrapbooking, and uh, they had some kind of charms too but way too big for stitch markers and I made this little clip because you know you see the store and then there's also this area where people can sit down and you know craft um, so you see people making cards and um, just so fun just you know take a look Kind of the only craft store that I saw um, you know there were some other stationery stores but um, yeah but we were also not really focused on finding anything craft related so um, yeah so it, it wasn't a big big part of the trip anyway so um, but we had a really nice time I'm happy to be home and uh, Get back. So that's all there is from me for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out the crochet along and the ruffle rue group if you're interested in the breeze blocks pattern uh, and taking part. Um, and I will see you again in two weeks. So have a very crafty couple of weeks and we'll see you all next time. Bye bye. <laughs>